Hello and welcome to another Ask Annette Monday. I am going to answer questions that you have submitted and today it's about omega-3s, it's about prebiotics for toddlers, we're going to talk about how to make your own tea and why you should make your own tea and we're going to talk about sugar, how to get rid of it. Well, I'm Annette Reeder from the biblicalnutritionist.com and it is always my joy to serve you God's recipe for excellent health. Be sure and hit the subscribe button, the like button, the comment button, the bell, you name it, go hit it and that way we can stay connected and notified every time we post another video. And we're posting videos almost every day. A lot of information that I want to share with you because we're living in a time where we need our health more than ever before. We need our health, we need our mental ability to focus, to not get distracted, and to stay on mission. And that's my purpose, is to keep you on mission by serving you God's recipe for excellent health. And if you have not done so already, please go to our website, thebiblicalnutritionist.com, grab that free resource, Seven Steps to Biblical Health. These are the seven steps I use with all of my coaching clients because they work. It's about your mindset, it's about your choices, and it's about what you believe. So I really hope you grab that. Now, let's get started. Question number one is about omega-3, and here's what the person wrote. I have a question regarding omega-3. How does heat affect it and how bad? The reason why I ask is mainly because I cook sardines and salmon, but I also like to know because I like to soak and dehydrate walnuts, and I'm thinking about sprouting and dehydrating flax and chia seeds. This was submitted by Jonathan Belmont. First of all, Jonathan, good for you. You you are like in the advanced class of healthy living. I am I'm just so excited that you are thinking ahead and also being creative with how you get your omega-3s in your diet. So let's talk about this. In fact, I just did a video in our grocery discovery this past week about salmon and the health benefits of salmon, how to buy the salmon, how to cook the salmon. So if you are watching and you have not watched that video, you can always follow us on Facebook, The Biblical Nutritionist, and you catch the grocery discoveries there first, and then they always land up here on YouTube, so make sure you're subscribed. So let's talk about this. Let's start with salmon. When salmon is purchased as wild caught, it has lived its life out in the Gulf of Alaska or out in the Pacific Ocean. The omega content is totally different than a farmed salmon. So salmon living out in the wild, they have to build up a reserve of fat because they're gonna to have to go up a very cold water stream, a cold water river, so that they can spawn. And this is important because that the need for building up that extra fat layer for insulation. Also, they need extra fat for energy because they're going to use a lot of energy going up that 300 mile river. This means they have a higher omega content. That high omega content is what we get to benefit from when we eat wild caught fresh salmon. So they're only available May through September. So if you're buying wild caught salmon in January and it's fresh, <laughs> Uh, that's not possible. So anyway, let's talk about this. So the omega content is when you have omega-3 content in your fish and your sar you mentioned sardines, that includes the EPA and the DHA. So we don't have to worry about a supplement and the ratios and all of that. So that's a benefit already. When you cook it, yes, you're gonna lose a little bit of the oil, but not that much. All of the studies with people consuming fish is always with a cooked fish. It's not gonna be the raw fish. Also, when you go to dehydrating, especially the seeds and the nuts, you're still going to have an omega-3 content. You may not have as much, but you will still have it. Now, you, if you are freshly roasting, then yes, you get the benefit. If you're buying it already roasted, no, you do not get the benefit, and that will have gone rancid. And so just wanna say, hey, good for you, you're doing a great job, and I just wanna encourage everyone to follow your example. So question number two says, my husband and I tried to drink regularly a prebiotic drink and started our 21-month-old 20 daughter, Zaris, to drink too. Is it okay for her to drink this early? Well, and this was submitted by God's gift, Zaris. And I apologize if I don't know how to pronounce your daughter's name because it's a beautiful name, just seeing it on the paper. 
Well, good for you. Another, it's like we have all of our champions submitting good questions, and I appreciate that. Good for you. So as soon as a child is able to drink a prebiotic, then make sure it's unsweetened and unflavored, which I'm sure you already know that, but for other listeners, they may not. As soon as a child is drinking milk, as soon as they're at that age, and you could even add prebiotic into formula mixtures if you're using a formula for your child. Once they are done with nursing, once they are ready to move on to regular milk, then a prebiotic can totally be enjoyed by that baby or that toddler. Now let's look at what we're trying to accomplish. I am all about the gut and microbiome because that is where we need to be in regards to gaining our health. So this is important and you are doing a fantastic job. As soon as a child can start drinking milk, start them on a prebiotic liquid, like a kefir or something like that. Also, you could have prebiotic coconut water. You can make so many different prebiotic drinks. Coconut water, they may not be ready for, but the prebiotic drink like a kefir, they could. Once again, unsweetened, 100% unsweetened, organic, and unflavored. We just want kefir and none of man's additives. So this is an excellent question and I'm glad you're being that protective for your child. Question number three says, how can you get rid of stored sugar in the body to improve insulin in the body without tablets? Okay, and this was submitted by Dolores McConville. Thank you, Dolores, for submitting this. You're asking a question that many people should be asking. So good for you for thinking ahead and trying to be proactive with your health. So sugar is stored in our liver, it's stored in our muscles, and it's stored as a lipid in our fat. And we do not need to be contributing more sugar to the diet. We actually could live very well without sugar. People who go without sugar actually have more beautiful skin. They have more energy. And it's amazing how much difference there is in people who don't consume sugar and those who do. We can get energy from so many different foods that we do not need sugar in our diet. So let's look at this. In order to utilize the sugar that's in your liver, in your muscles, and in your fat, we have to do four things. So I've got four steps for you, okay? Number one is fasting. Start increasing your overnight fasting to a minimum of 12 hours. We, we need 12 hours for a good cleanup. Now, let me ask you this. When you go to stay at a hotel, check-in time is usually four o'clock and check out is usually 11. So that way they have a five hour window for cleaning, okay? You need longer than five hours for cleaning your body. You need a minimum of 12 hours. So let's say you stop eating at 7 p.m., then you should not eat breakfast until 7 a.m. That's a minimum of 12 hours. That way your liver can start doing the cleanup process that it's designed to do, help utilize that sugar. The less you're eating during those 12 hours or even no eating during 12 hours, your brain still needs energy. Your body is still burning calories all night long. So it needs that energy. And as long as you're not continually eating all night long, it will utilize the, the glucose, the glucogen that is in the liver. It would then, if there's none there, it will move on to what's being stored in your fat cells. So if you wanna get rid of stored fat, first of all, do some intermittent fasting, minimum of 12 hours every night, and even see if you can go 14 hours. It's a very healthy time frame. Diabetics can do it if, they, if they're working with their doctor, and it is a very healthy plan. Number one, intermittent fasting. Number two is exercise. Exercise burns energy. Well, if you wanna start burning some sugar that's stored, let's start exercising. You don't have to go crazy, just start moving. Remember, years ago, we would encourage people to get more steps, so park far away from the store. Well, so many times now we're ordering online, which means we're not even walking to the store. So park further away in the parking lots, try to get more steps in during the day, or even just do a 10 minute burst workout or a HIIT workout, and that would be fabulous. We need to start exercising. Number three, we need to drink more water. So water does a couple things. Water helps us to stay hydrated. We get hungry and we crave sugar when we're dehydrated. So the more we're hydrated adequately, the less we're gonna be eating sugars, the less we're gonna to need to get rid of the sugars. So <laughs> that leads us to number four is, we'll stop eating sugar. Yes, I kind of already talked about this, but the more you eat less sugar, the less you're gonna to have to get rid of. 
all right? We talk about this extensively in the Treasures of Healthy Living DVD series. One week specifically is about sugar. One week we have it in the Bible study about sugar, and we have it on the video series about sugar and what it does to your blood work, what it does to your life expectancy. So if you wanna live a fun, enjoyable, energizing life, get rid of the sugar. <laughs> totally, you can do it. I know you can, and once you break free of it, you're gonna wonder why you didn't do it sooner. So question number four, you may have talked about different teas before. If you have, I would love the link, but if you haven't, I would love to know about the different healing benefits you could get from tea. Lately, I have been having chamomile tea. It also has spearmint in it, good for you, and have noticed that I'm sleeping better. Well, this is a great question. No, I haven't done a video on this, but I may have to. In fact, I'm gonna do an entire tea course because it's so fun and there's just so much to learn. So to answer your question, I went out in my yard and my granddaughter and I helped pick some plants that we could use to make tea. So I just wanna share with you here what I have. So I have some rue. This is really good if you make this into a tea. Let's make sure you can see it there. This is my rue. And actually the tiger swallowtail butterflies love this plant. You will always have some caterpillars and some butterflies in your yard from that. But this is really good for women who have menopause issues or who have menstrual cycle issues. This is, you can make a tea with this every day. Next to this, I have some hyssop. Hyssop also is a good plant. Remember hyssop in the Bible, which is a different type plant in biblical, day, in biblical days and in the biblical land, but this is a hyssop. And so these young tender leaves right up here would be really good. Oh my goodness, that is so good for, uh, for some tea as well. This, these flowers, you can see it's kind of past their prime. They're already lost most of their blooms. So I just wanna go for the young tender leaves. Over here, we have some raspberry leaves. So that would make a tea. And then you can kind of see my purple cone flower, which is also echinacea. Now these flowers are not at their prime. In fact, they're past their prime. But I wanted to bring them in just as a point of reference. And so the echinacea, which is the purple cone flower, yes, would make a beautiful tea and you could even use the petals for decoration, but definitely this is very good for helping us with sinus infections and helping us with colds and flus and just helping us to stay healthy. Then around here, this is just decoration. We have some mint, which, mm, okay, that's amazing. So we have some mint, you can use it all the time. That helps to clear phlegm in your throat. That helps with just focus and things like that. And let's see, I thought I had something else. Oh, I didn't cut it and put it in my bouquet, but I have oregano. In fact, I just did a video on oregano and just making an oregano tea in the afternoon just gives you that mental clarity, that mental upswing that like, hey, I can focus this afternoon. I don't have to go into that slump. So oregano makes another wonderful tea. You could do a parsley tea. I've done that video before. So I have done little bits and pieces, but never a tea series. So I think it's time for us to get together for a cup of tea. And I just really wanna thank you for submitting that question. The health benefits are going to vary by the plant, by the leaf, and by the person. Because each one of us, we kind of respond a little bit differently to the different teas. And so never be afraid to make a tea out of some of the plants that God's given us. They are all gonna be a blessing. And then, hey, if while you're making your tea, you have a beautiful bouquet in your house, that is always a good thing too. Okay, so I just wanna share some other teas. There's no limit. You could have lemon balm, chamomile, echinacea, milk thistle. Um, milk thistle would be for detoxification. I always talk about the liver and how healthy we need to keep it. Well, the milk thistle would work with that. Lemon balm is for calming you down, which I could always use a little of. Um, also the chamomile is for uh, an upset stomach. So there's just a lot that we could benefit from. Let me see, I have one more note here I wanna share with you. The rose hips. So I do have rose, roses blooming. I could have brought that in as well. That's gonna give us a boost of vitamin C. Let me see, um, am I missing anything? The mint is good for digestion and calming. I kind of mentioned that, so, all right, good. So that's just a few of the notes that I wrote down to answer your question a little bit more thoroughly. And I just wanna say, hey, thank you for submitting your questions. Now, if you ever miss this Q&A that we post every Monday, um, Ask Annette Monday, then you could always catch us on our podcast, Biblical Nutrition Academy. And when we post your questions there and you get them answered, 
you know, then sometimes you get entered into a drawing for a prize and also you get entered into a drawing for the prize when you do a couple different things like promoting our podcast, uh, commenting about us on social media, and then also joining our page, Biblical Nutrition Academy Facebook page. So anyway, I'm Annette Reader, the Biblical Nutritionist, and it's always my joy to serve you God's recipe for excellent health. And today it includes some tea. Remember, God loves you. He has a purpose for your life. You are unique. So we don't want to be falling into the identity crisis of always comparing ourselves to other people because that's what the world does. We don't have to because we were uniquely made in His image to reflect His glory, to live our life in the way He designed. And that life is always going to be the best life ever. Thanks for watching. Annette Reader, Biblical Nutritionist.